Welcome everyone to this virtual space provided by the Mexican Cultural Institute here in Germany. My name is Luisa Reyes Rotana. I want to say I am very happy to be here with you today. Um, architect Pirko Petrovic, architect Francisco Serrano, the ambassador of Mexico in Germany, Rogelio Gran Guillón, and myself are here to celebrate the 20th anniversary of this wonderful building that is the host of the Mexican Embassy in Berlin. This, this building was designed by architect Francisco Serrano and his longtime partner, Teodoro Gonzalez de Leon. And Pirco will interview Francisco Serrano around the project and construction of this emblematic building. But first, I would like to ask Ambassador Gran Guillaume to give us a message. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, I'm very happy to welcome two renowned architects. Pico Petrovic and Francisco Serrano, and to acknowledge the role more than two decades ago and today, the year in which we mark the 20th anniversary of the building of the Embassy of Mexico in Berlin. This interview is an important reminder of the presence of Mexico in Germany, of our architecture and of our common values and aspirations. It is true that this is not exactly how we envisioned to commemorate this anniversary, as the corona pandemic has overridden plans, projects, and ideas the world over. Nonetheless, we are truly fortunate to have you with us and to be able to host this interview with architect Serrano, who designed this magnificent building along with Teodoro Gonzalez de Leon, who passed away four years ago, but lives on to his architectural legacy. Moreover, the fact that the interview will be conducted by Pir Kopetrovic adds to the special nature of this occasion. Pirko Petrovic was in charge of adapting the architectural project to German laws and regulations and was present during the construction period on the completion 20 years ago. Since then, Petrovic and Serrano have developed a close friendship. Francisco Serrano, on the other hand, is not only a celebrated Mexican architect, whose achievements are too many to mention in this brief intervention. He's also an enthusiastic and eloquent speaker. I'm sure that the architectural community around the world, and of course Mexicans and Germans alike, will enjoy very much learning from Francisco Serrano himself about the challenges and anecdotes that have given life to this embassy. Lastly, and before we start, I just want to say that for us, who are fortunate enough to be able to work at the Embassy of Mexico in Berlin, it is truly a pleasure and an experience every day to live, work, and breathe within one of the most emblematic pieces of architecture, of our culture. I thank you for joining us and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Greg Guillaume. Um, Pirko, please go ahead. Good morning, Francisco. How are you today? I'm fine, Pirko. How are you? <laughs> Me too. Well, um, our baby, the embassy, as we called it many times, is getting 20 years old in a few days. And uh, we want to um, look to the past and hear how everything began. The German government moved to Bonn, from, from Bonn to Berlin and many countries wanted to move also the diplomatic representation to Berlin. 
the state of Mexico bought the uh, property in the quarter called Klinghöfer Dreieck. The competition with eight random, renowned uh, Mexican architects uh, was occurred on uh, 1997. You took part together with your colleague Teodoro de Gonzalez de Leon and won the competition. What was the idea to create in Berlin um, as a bridge between two um, countries like Mexico and Germany? What was the ground idea? I think that first, uh, when we won that competition, that was an event in Mexico because it was very well known, this competition, because we, uh, the government invited eight teams of architects to do a presentation. So we were very fortunate to win. The main idea of, uh, as it is written, and you have a document in the embassy about it, was to make a building that represent not only the old Mexican architecture, but the present architecture at that time of the very, the very beginning of the 21st century. The, the main idea was to make a building that have the scale, even though it's not a big building, to have a scale that would have a memory, a memory different from all the buildings that surround it. I always say that if you look at the buildings next door, you can count the floors. And if you look at our building, it's difficult to count the floors. And at the same time, when you look at frontly, then you can count the floors. But mainly we make what we call a monumental building without being monumental in size, but monumentally in the thinking of the building. Mainly, it has many things of our culture, like inside and in the place where you are having right now, to have slope of things for the gardening that remembers the pyramids, to have the patio, which is common of our architecture uh, in Mexico, not only the old architecture, but our architecture. And the other thing that was very important is that at that time we, I started to use uh, fluently and, and uh, as an important item, the concrete, which has an, ex an uh, it's a material that is done in the Mexican way, not in the international way, which has accomplished many things about our, lab at our hand labor. First, second, will stay uh, very well in time. Now you, we have that building with 20 years and you can still see the facade and it's still basically the same quality of the material. Those were the main things about it. And, and the last one, which is very important, is to have a door. I have a door, which was the main item in the, in the big facade that invites German people to go in Mexico. That's a way to, to straight shake hands when you meet someone and you invite it to your house. That's a meaning of that door, which we repeated and we, we did it before that. Teodoro and I did it in, in Brasilia and, and, and now in Berlin. And after this, uh, we did it in, in Guatemala too. So it's a way to say Mexican is, is a country that is open. And the way to open is, to, and here's the door to go in Mexico. That, that was the main idea, no? Um, about the door uh, or about the entrance, I can remember that we asked many times, what about security? What about secure uh, the building against some uh, enemies. And um, Mr. Friedrich and uh, Mr. Trejo, who was the, the first, um, how do you call it, first um, uh, ministry 
in the uh, in those times he always said we don't we are not afraid we don't have any enemies so we don't have to have um, some uh, security on the, at the door we are open And so uh, there is only one door, uh, one very big door, which opens and you have uh, the feeling you are uh, inside because you come into um, a room with glass. So um, we worked very long at that door, <laughs> at that uh, entrance. Let me tell you something. This is a door that is not a human scale. It's, it's a mm -hmm. scale that is, has a meaning of giving, as I said, a welcome to everyone that comes to Mexico. So it's oversized. Yes. And, and that was a problem to do it also. And it has all, always been a trouble of maintenance. But anyway, that's the biggest sign. The other thing that I think is important and is that we accomplish all the rules that the government of Berlin asked for the building, which is not true of our neighbors. That you can see it very clearly when you see it. But at that time, I, 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 we fought very much for the permits to, to, to do the building because it was, especially for the material, because they, they say that it, it was not allowed to do concrete that way and so forth and so forth. So, so we have many meetings with the authorities. You, re, you remember Pico and yes. finally we won. And even the mayor of Berlin in the inauguration day in his the speech, he said that he, he welcomed Mexico and, our, and us architects because we fought very much to do that example of good architecture and a new material in the site of Berlin, if you remember that. Hmm? Yes, I remember. I think uh, that they were afraid that uh, in the winter time you get some water into the concrete and uh, it's going to be to rust if, um, if you have a material with, which, is, uh, which is broken. It's actually broken. The, in the front and that was the um, um, they had afraid that, that it's uh, it's destroying the the coldness and the water are destroying it but um, it didn't happen we can see that it's still a very good um, quality and it's also still white even if uh, we have much traffic on the street uh, just in front of the embassy. We had, I think, two points are very different in, in Mexico and in Germany. Uh, it is the temperature, the insulation in that case, and uh, the other things uh, thing is um, the fire protection. The insulation is, it means that it's very, it's very diff, it was very difficult to get uh, the outside and inside um, insulated to each other so that uh, we don't get any, um, any coldness inside and and um, it doesn't destroy the, the facade in the inside. And uh, many things didn't, didn't, uh, wasn't the core with uh, the German industrial norm. And that was the point why the contractor always um, said, well, it's, we can't do it on that way. So we had really very many discussions uh, if it's okay to do like that. And another thing was, was um, of course, the fire protection, which is, um, well, since 
about, I think it was also on that time, 20 years ago, it was a big thing because uh, there was a big fire on, uh, on the airport Düsseldorf and the German started to look at this, um, this point in all their buildings and we had many, many new regula regulations for the fire protection. But let me take, let me say something about it. One thing is that we in Mexico also protect our buildings. We are not crazy. And at the same time, we took very much in account in every building we, we have built, what now is very well known as sustainability, but which we know at that time as common sense. If we went, to do a building in Berlin, we knew of the extremeness of the weather. So mm. we have to take in account that that's what we did. Yes. And at the same time, the light in, in Berlin is not the same light we have in Mexico. In Mexico, everything is bright. Everything is it's, uh, incand uh, irrescendent. And at the same time, in Berlin, everything is a little bit opaque. I don't know if the word in English is right or not, but... It's not directly light, it's opaque. It's... Okay, and the other thing, that's the reason why we make the patio, which makes a sense of Mexican thing, and we have all the roof that gets the light in, and at the same time, the punctures on the, on the cylinder, so that we have the need of pointing out that we took in, very much in care the climate, the sun, the light, yeah. the moon at night. We have been many times in there, and I think that the light is one of the main items of that building. And at the same time, when you go outside, you can see the shadows of the building very clear. Mm -hmm. You can see the shadows in between the, the, the main columns, or you can see the shadows going through the building, which mm -hmm. is very important because we think that the main idea of doing a building is that people that are going to inhabit it have a better sense of life. That's for them to, de to develop it. But you give them the encounter between something that is not very uh, uh, friendly and then when you get in and say well this is this is home or this is my office or this is whatever no and the other thing that was very important is to have every room that could open the window to the outside that's one thing that is very common in mexico on account that we do not use air conditioning but it was not common in Berlin or in Germany because you use a lot of um, um, like uh, air condition or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yes. I was going to use the word uh, um, calefaction, but that's not the word. To, to warm a building, no? Let Eating. me tell you something that, that is, was just very important in this. The specification of the materials aside the concrete was very, very important because we wanted to make it as simple as possible for maintenance. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we have to have many things on uh, security about the building. Mm -hmm. So this, there were two things that were not very clear in, in the way we express it. And we also have two stairs for that small building on account yes. that nobody is in risk in yes. case of a fire. The other main thing that I think uh, it's important is the distribution of the spaces. The main idea of the door is that you go in the building and you feel the sense of the whole building in the patio that has all the stories. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you have the, the, the room that is multipurpose in which we have exposed architecture and painting and sculpture and give mm -hmm. lectures and so forth, because that's the way 
in which a country is related with another in terms of the embassies, in terms of the represented, uh, in Spanish, la representación diplomática cultural, no? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that those are the main things. And there's another one that is very important in which we think very much is the top of the building. In the top of the building, we have gardens, mm -hmm. which was a must by authority and that almost no one in that same uh, block have accomplished. Yes. But anyway, I think that's a way to, to understand also architecture and have the link with the magnificent piece of land that Mexico bought. Would you go to Klinghofer Strasse, but you can look also at the, at the main tier garden park, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. the most important park in Berlin. And I think those are the main things. As small things, we could say something about the way we handle the, the interior climate. There was at that time a new way of doing that, which was instead of moving the air to mm -hmm. have the good temperature, why don't we, instead of that, we take care of the surfaces of the building, and then when we need it, we make it warm, when we need it, we make it cold. That was a very uh, successful thing afterwards. I don't know what they think, the people that works now there, but at that time, it was a very important achievement. Even somebody celebrates us with that for that, and and also we we have some recognition and prizes and so forth for the building, for the whole thing. At that time, it was not called sustainability, but mm -hmm. it was something that was different. I remember the name of the guy that was in charge of that. That was Mr. Poguntke. Yes. Which we always fight, and I always say that we had. Not a very good climate, but anyway, we are going to try it. <laughs> but those were the things that make us very friendly with the people that work in the job site. I remember the, the big Mason man, which was a Polish, saying, if you can do it in Mexico, I can do it better here in Berlin. I'm talking about the concrete, the yes. chiseling of the concrete and so forth. So. We, we always felt very proud of that building because it's a small building. It's not a big construction as some others we have done in Mexico, for example. But at the same time, it has a meaning. And the meaning is what is more important because it's a message of Mexico to Germany. It's a message of Mexican culture. Not only a building that houses diplomacy and so forth, but it has meanings, and many people have told us that. We, we, uh, I remember very well walking through to the uh, sidewalk in, in Klinghofer Strasse mm -hmm. and looking many Japanese touching the building, <laughs> trying to find out what the hell was that. And, and then I, I, I asked them, what are you looking for? What is this material, sir? Because we do not understand it. It has... It's a stone that you brought it from other places. What is it? And when I said it was concrete, they said, oh, I, ooh, this is magnificent. And even for that, afterwards with a friend of us that is an architect in, very famous in Japan, they invite us to give a lecture there and mm -hmm. talk only about the material, not <laughs> only the building, but the material. Well, those things are perhaps are not important, but. I think they have a meaning of Mexico being first class um, neighbors of many countries, not only Germany. Yes, I, I think nobody accepted that Mexico, which is so far away from here, um, will build such a... Uh, magnificent uh, building in uh, Berlin. 
Mr. Friedrich, Friedrich um, who was ambassador, he said uh, on that time, my mission was uh, to bring um, the modern Mexico to Berlin. And I think um, it's really, uh, it was really success, successful because um, before this building was built, nobody knew uh, where is the Mexican embassy in Berlin? Now everybody knows it. And uh, Mexico got really um, much, um, uh, got uh, much more um, cultural and uh, many people, um, Mexico is now well known for many people than before because uh, there are very many uh, exhibitions and um, uh, very many happenings in this building in the, these 20 years. It's really open uh, house for many things and many people. Let me tell you uh, a happening that in my life it's very memorable. When the World Cup of football was celebrated in, in Germany, as you remember, there were many items of cultural thing in Berlin. Yes. There was a big concert in the Wallebühne in which two, two main uh, Mexican or Mexican Spaniard singers were in. It was mm -hmm. Placido Domingo and Rolando Villazón. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, they give a party in the embassy, mm -hmm. which for myself and my son that was with me in that time, it is what something incredible to have all those people that were very, very far from the, from our cultural representation, not the singers, but people that came in, yes. architects, sculptures, uh, singers, uh, musicians, and so forth. It was something outstanding in which everybody said, oh, what a beautiful building, who did it? And I remember the ambassador saying, this is the guy responsible because <laughs> the, other, the other guy didn't like football. Teodoro wasn't there. So that's what the, <laughs> the ambassador say as a, as a main item of our closeness between, again, the world, not only Germans, but mm -hmm. the world was inside that party. Yes. That's a big remembrance. The ambassador at that time was Castro Valle. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it was, a, in whole Berlin, it was a really big party on that time. And that's right. Uh, the world was here and the world was also in the Mexican embassy. Um, can you tell something about uh, the very beginning as the cornerstone was uh, put into well, the... Well, that, that, that's, uh, a, that's a very sad story, but I am going to say it. We won that competition in 97, 1997. Mm -hmm. And there was going to be the, the cornerstone put in by the president, which at that time was... Uh, the President Cedillo. And when we were in a, in, a, in a tent that was made for that celebration, and we were explaining him about the, the, the building, Teodoro and myself, and there was the ambassador and many other people, somebody came to the president and said, give a message. And the president said, I'm going to excuse, but I have to go to Mexico. That was when the big, big uh, issue of climatic that went in Acapulco and, and the, mainly the city was destroyed in many parts. So that was the end of that uh, cornerstone. And for many other reasons, everything stops. But once uh, afterwards, a couple of years after, Teodoro was in a, in, a, in a celebration of something, and the president came to him and asked him, what happened with the Berlin? 
It's already finished. And, and Teodoro said, no, we haven't started. Why don't you have started? Please, I would love to, that in my term, this building is inaugurated. And then everything started moving. Then we went to Berlin to try to get a contractor because we had something that was uh, with us, which has Asman, which Pericles were part of that, but we de didn't have a contractor. So mm -hmm. we started looking for m many people about that. And finally, we, we finished this with a very nice gentleman by the name of Groth. I don't remember the name of his company, but because Groth my member, well, you have it. Yeah. Uh, and then, this gentleman said, this is almost impossible, but let me give it a thought. And, and a week after we came back to Berlin and, and he said, now I am sure we can do it. I have a be very good uh, company that will be with me because Mr. Groth was a developer, not a mm -hmm. contractor. Yes. And so they, they, they uh, went and asked Hotif, which mm -hmm. was a big, big contractor firm in, in Germany. And so we, we managed to get it over. And as you know, we inaugurated on the 23rd of November. Yes, it was really a hurry work. Um, on that time, on uh, 1998, I came to this office, Asman, and, and that was my first and my main project in, in this office. Uh, the engineering was planned, as you, um, as you said already, with, uh, from Dietmar Bokundke, who has had the uh, amazing idea with the cooling ceilings and walls ceiling. in, instead of uh, the air condition. And of course, Oscar Rodriguez from Mexico, who helped us uh, from your side with all those uh, problems. And uh, on the top, Arturo Trejo, uh, the first ministry who always uh, came also to the planning meetings. And uh, well, I think um, he was not uh, um, a building master, so he didn't understand very much. So I had to stay always there and, and explain him everything uh, how to, uh, so that he could understand it and he could make uh, the right decisions. Um, but we were all together uh, very, we produced much in, on that time and it had to go uh, also very fast because we didn't have uh, uh, not many time. And it was in November as uh, they made the contract with, um, with Hochtief. And on the top as project manager, there were um, Burkhard Siegemund, who has a, had a very strong hand to uh, push the, all, the, all the workers uh, to do it, uh, do everything in the time. And um, we had also a problem instead of, um, uh, instead of the concrete. The concrete problem was um, uh, we saluted it um, and they, we get also the permit to produce the white concrete. But the another problem was uh, the facade, the glass facade behind the columns. And that was also not very easy because the columns, they had to be in the whole uh, length in one piece. And uh, they were also in the whole length in the, uh, in the facade. So we had to um, think about how to carry the ceilings. 
without any uh, columns uh, which were building with the ceilings. So um, we just found it, uh, the photographs where we, uh, the, um, the columns came in one piece on the very long lorry and uh, the building was actually already ready and the um, uh, columns just, uh, uh, they, we put them at the facade and fixed them with, um, uh, with the ceilings. That was very exciting um, theater, like, a theater, I would say. Let, let me interrupt you because that job was done only in two days. Yes. So there was a lot of people looking at the, at the way they were handling the, this precast because that was not common. And at the same time, not was very vertical. Some were vertical, but the other ones mm -hmm. were inclined. So I remember very well a lot of people trying to film it and okay. saying, what the hell are these guys doing? And then when they took all the false, uh, uh, well, how do you say the, in Spanish? It's la obra falsa, the, the false work of to retain the building. When we yes. took it out and everything was in, in their place, I think that was a very successful and a very well known uh, maneuver of yes. construction at that time, in which at that time there was a lot of job sites a lot of uh, different uh, construction going on. And even though our was a very small one, a lot of people was interested in what the hell we were doing there. I remember uh, the pupils of the Technical University of uh, Berlin, that at that time the teacher was uh, this, uh, this guy that did the, the Jewish Berlin Museum, what is his name? Now I forgot Liveskin? it. Yes, Liveskin. Mm -hmm. Liveskin. And he sent the, the pupils to, to find out what the hell we were doing. <laughs> I remember that very well. And afterwards, many years afterwards, I met this guy in some other place in Europe. And he said, I certainly remember you because you were the guy with, with your partner that did that magnificent Berlin building and so forth, so forth. So there, there, there were many things that are uh, unique about this building, not only in the architectural part, but also in the relation between human beings, human beings related with us, no? Uh, let me tell you something else that I think is important. Pirko was saying now about the windows. Those windows were really a trouble but we find out the guy by the, I don't remember his name, but the, the film was Vindek. Vindek. Uh, and then we find out and we went to the, to the factory mm -hmm. to try to understand what were the problems. And once we said, why don't we do it that way? He said, certainly, that's the way we will do it. And if you remember, that was a very, very interesting, uh, meeting because it wasn't his factory and he said he, now i understand it and we can do it and yes, so he, he, fin he finally he, did it out he built sorry uh, he built the facade a piece of facade in his factory one to one so that we could touch it yes we could exactly. he, he built also the the concrete columns of wood, wooden columns there, and uh, catched on these columns uh, the windows. And that's it. He told me a um, couple of days ago the same thing that uh, Teodoro said to him, why couldn't we do it like that? And he said, okay, we do it like that. Yes, yes. I think that there's a lot of memory about the building. And uh, I will also try to say something which is important. Once we won the competition, as normally in many other works, we resume what is the most important thing 
we can communicate with this building? What will be the main idea this building should communicate not only as uh, useful things, not only as a beautiful thing, but the other most important thing, how is this building going to serve the community, yes. the users and the people that come to, to see it or use it? But mainly there is another item. What is this building is going to do to the city? what we call the context. And I think that that is something that the building in the, the embassy in Berlin has accomplished. As Pirko was saying, a lot of people now know where is the Mexican embassy. Yes. Why? Because it's not a common building. It's a building done for Mexico and for Mexicans that are very proud of their country. And that's the way we, we we did it and we, we worked very, very hard because the building was done afterwards in just one year, which mm -hmm. is a very short time, not only for, for, for Berlin, but for any place in the world because it cannot be precast everything. It has mm -hmm. to be a concrete pour in place and so forth. So uh, I think those are the main items about the building. I don't know if you have another memory but i think that one thing is important is what the people that are living in in, in the building still think about it the other day i was telling you about the lady that is in in the main door uh, letting people in mm -hmm. every time i have gone to berlin which i have been many times afterwards she always goes up and says architecto I congratulate you because everybody congratulates me about the building. And I also always say that you and, and Mr. Teodoro did it. So, so that's something that is human, human uh, relationship, which is perhaps not important, but I think it's very important. Yes, it is very important. And uh, um, as I said in the beginning, our baby is getting 20 years old. It was in the end, um, as well, we had also many uh, fights in, in this time, not you and me, but, uh, but you know, uh, on the building side, you always have fights because you have this position, another one had this position and um, it has to, belong somehow together but uh, in the end as the building was ready and it was uh, ready in time uh, we were all very happy and even after 20 years I mean we are friends and there are many other people uh, other friendships that still um, are alive. I mean, as I last week, as I called uh, Mr. Siegemund and Mr. Windeck, they uh, graduated uh, me and hello, how are you? And so on. And uh, even if we don't meet us every year or um, something, only sometimes we have these memories and these memories are very um, important and we are happy about this building. And we are also happy about um, that the embassy is, um, is uh, congratulating this or us uh, for this building because it's, um, it's not always like that. People just leave or work in the buildings, but uh, not everybody respect so much a building as uh, the Mexicans or the Mexican embassy. And that's very important also for us as architects, isn't it? Yes. What do you uh, understand under good architecture? Well, I think that good architecture is the one that is not the show off, but it's a, a, a thing that can 
covers people because that's the main thing of the spaces and at the same time gives a signal in the surroundings which what we call the context but i as you remember once we finish a building we have a lot of human beings that will enjoy or suffer those spaces and that's an important thing because not always we can do whatever we want and when we cannot do it it's our mistake not somebody else's mistake it's our mistake you follow me yes and the best you can do is to serve a community to help the people to be better people that's what you said that and i think so i think so i think that the main idea of, of doing things for people is to serve your community but that that even you want it or not that's what you are doing so if you are conscious of that then the the work will be better it's not a, a happen a happening that uh, something that happens without the thought but it's a thought that makes it happen mm -hmm. This building is the diplomats among diplomats. It, it has a personality of its own and it does its own diplomacy because it's beautiful and welcoming and Mexican and modern and at the same time respectful of the context in which it stands. So it has developed a life of its own. And I think this is the reason, one of the many reasons why we celebrate its birthday. It is a birthday to be celebrated. And for us working here, it's a, it's a presence. It's, it's, a, it's, one of, it's a companion. It's a sort of a colleague in the diplomatic work we, we do. So we're thankful and we're happy. And um, he, as, as the ambassador said in the beginning of the talk, this is not the celebration we envisioned, but it will be a placeholder for a bigger celebration that we will have as soon as the world allows us. Thank you very much, Architect Serrano. Thank you very much, Architect Petrovic. It's been such a pleasure to be here with you tonight. Thank you for inviting you. us. Thank you very much. Gobierno de México.